about 66% of patients with moderately severe cirrhosis and 96% of people waiting for liver transplant have a vitamin D deficiency. In individuals with chronic liver disease, the rate of osteoporotic fractures is approximately twice that of the age match controls. For this reason, calcium and vitamin D supplementation have been recommended for patients with cirrhosis and low bone density. In a study on over 324 subjects with alcoholic liver disease when compared to controls, severe vitamin D deficiency was significantly associated with higher liver enzymes, increased hepatic venous pressure gradient and worse MELD and child Prag scores. Further analysis showed low vitamin D was also associated with cirrhosis and mortality after one year. An analysis of chronic liver disease patients admitted to an outpatient liver clinic found the vitamin D deficiency predicted worst child Prag and MELD scores and it might predict the decompensation and mortality in chronic liver failure patients. A study on 88 hospitalised patients in the hepatology unit of a hospital showed low levels of vitamin D were independently associated with bacterial infection in the patients with cirrhosis. Another similar study found low vitamin D was associated with increased mortality in patients with severe liver disease. A lab study using a special form of vitamin D along with a novel chemotherapeutic agent inhibited the proliferation of hepatic stellate cells. Patients with cirrhosis show endothelial dysfunction within the vessels of the liver and this is associated with lower circulating levels of vitamin C. In an uncontrolled study of cirrhosis patients, intravenous injection of 3 grams of vitamin C lowered the markers of oxidative stress and the venous pressure within the liver. The vitamin C mitigated the increase in the liver fat and the globulins or the blood proteins caused by the experimentally induced coleostasis or the decrease in bile flow and it reduced the alcohol induced small intestinal bacteria overgrowth in a model of alcoholic liver fibrosis in guinea pigs. Liver cirrhosis patients generally have lower blood levels of vitamin E and liver biopsies from people with alcoholic cirrhosis typically show lower hepatic alpha tocopherol content than the individuals with normal livers and lower blood alpha tocopherol levels than individuals with alcoholic fatty liver or those with normal liver histology. These lower levels of vitamin E were associated with an increased susceptibility of the plasma component of the blood to oxidative stress. In patients with primary biliary cirrhosis, one author concluded that vitamin E supplementation should be considered not only in individuals with overt vitamin E deficiency, but also in individuals who meet certain additional criteria, such as total serum bilirubin over 3 mg per deciliter, serum chloroglycine, a crystalline bile acid involved in the emulsification of fat being over 600 micrograms per deciliter, or serum alkaline phosphatase over 1000 international units per litre. In a study that enrolled women with primary biliary cirrhosis, serum vitamin E levels were significantly decreased in the patients who had psychomotor impairment. Patients with liver cirrhosis showed a marked increase in oxidative stress levels. In patients with hepatitis C related cirrhosis, vitamin E normalised the levels of liver enzyme alanine aminotransferase, while vitamin E and fermented papaya extract each improved glutathione levels, which were significantly lower in the patients with cirrhosis. A study on patients with liver cirrhosis and a history of hepatitis C infection revealed the participants who were treated with alpha tocopherol live longer without the development of hepatocellular carcinoma when compared to participants who were not treated. But the difference was not statistically significant. A study on 80 prospective liver transplantation recipients showed oral tocotrienols lowered the MELD scores by 50%, whereas supplementation with 200 mg of alpha tocopherol lowered it by only 20%. The authors concluded further studies are needed to examine the effects of the tocotrienols in end-stage liver disease. 
the wrong kind of intestinal bacteria plays a role in several complications of cirrhosis. Urease producing bacteria in the gut increase ammonia production and this contributes to hepatic encephalopathy and the migration of bacteria across the intestinal wall has been implicated in both spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and bleeding due to esophageal varices. Use of probiotics to address these complications have mixed results. In some studies, supplementing cirrhosis patients with probiotic bacteria reduced the blood ammonia level and the urease producing colonic bacteria. Two studies that used a slightly different combination of probiotics without prebiotics found no effect. There was a trend towards reducing the child Prag scores, suggesting an improvement in liver function in some of the studies. Mixed results on the portal venous pressure and no reduction in the incidence of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Hepatic encephalopathy, a complication of cirrhosis, is currently treated by non-digestible fermentable disaccharide, lactulose, a synthetic prebiotic. Combinations of fermentable natural fibres like beta-glucan, inulin, pectin and resistant starch, or fructo-oligosaccharides with probiotic bacteria showed a reduction in the blood ammonia level in cirrhosis patients with minimal or mild hepatic encephalopathy. In a meta-analysis of four randomised control trials for oral zinc supplementation in 223 patients with hepatic encephalopathy resulting from cirrhosis, three of the trials showed improvements in cognitive function compared to the baseline measures. In the fourth study using zinc carnosate, the cirrhosis patients experienced reductions in blood ammonia levels improved quality of life scores and reduced child Prag scores, which is a measurement of cirrhosis severity after six months of supplementation. S-adenosylmethionine, or SAME, participates in the synthesis of the important liver protectant antioxidant glutathione, and this is lower in patients with psoriasis. Although the SAME has been studied as an innovative therapy for fibrosis, one systematic review of the literature was unable to confirm a statistically significant benefit in alcoholic liver disease, perhaps partially as a result of a variable quality across the studies. In a large clinical trial on the SAME, patients with alcoholic cirrhosis on SAME at 1.2 grams per day for two years, it was demonstrated there was a non-significant trend towards improvement in two-year survival when compared to controls. When only patients with mild to moderate disease were included in the analysis, however the survival significantly improved. The progression to liver transplantation was significantly reduced in the SAME group by 88% versus the control group 70%. The difference in survival between the groups only becomes apparent after one year. Many of the subjects in the trial had hepatitis B or C infection in addition to the alcoholic cirrhosis. While several other small studies have shown encouraging results for the use of SAME to improve the liver biochemical parameters, such as liver enzyme values in alcoholic cirrhosis patients, they've shown mixed results on its ability to improve the survival in patients with the disease, and they have had no apparent effects on steatosis, fibrosis and inflammation. Soybeans contain a lipid mixture called polyenal phosphatidylcholine and this has been shown to help to protect the integrity of cellular membranes, especially in the liver. One of the mechanisms by which the toxicants like alcohol lead to liver dysfunction is by damaging the liver cell membrane in a process called lipid peroxidation. The polyenal phosphatidylcholine helps to prevent lipid peroxidation in the liver cells. The lipid mixture prevents cirrhosis in animal experiments and it opposed fibrosis and improved liver function tests among heavy drinking humans in clinical trials. In animal models, curcumin has mitigated the liver injury from hepatitis B and C infection. Alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, hepatocellular carcinoma, primary biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. All chronic liver diseases 
with psoriasis as a potential endpoint. It might also have a protective effect against chemically induced cirrhosis in animals' livers. In these models, the curcumin inhibits metabolic pathways such as NF-kappa B signaling that produce the inflammatory cytokines that stimulate the fibrosis. In addition, lab and animal studies have shown that curcumin reduces beta-catenin, a protein that promotes liver stelate cell activation and fibrosis. Glycerizic acid, also known as glycerizin, is an extract from the roots of the licorice plant. It's been studied and found to be effective in many conditions, but its most common application is in liver disease, where it has pronounced anti-inflammatory and antiviral effects. A trial compared intravenous glycerizic acid in 17 patients to intravenous glycerizic acid plus corticosteroids in 14 patients for the treatment of autoimmune hepatitis. The recovery rate was significantly higher in the glycerizic acid alone group a trial in 379 patients who failed interferon plus ribavirin treatment for hepatitis C found a 12-week course of intravenous glycerizic acid compared to a placebo dramatically lowered the liver enzyme ALT. A subsequent 40-week uncontrolled trial of intravenous glycerizic acid found a trend towards a reduction of inflammation and fibrosis that barely missed the cutoff for statistical significance. An uncontrolled study of long-term, average 10 years oral glycerizic acid administration in hepatitis C found that those in the treatment group had two and a half times less chance of developing hepatocellular carcinoma, a common outcome of hepatitis C. In a rodent model, the glycerizic acid was found to have hepatoprotective effects similar to silamarin. CoQ10 acts as a scavenger of free radicals in the cell membranes. One study found CoQ10 levels were 70% lower in subjects with liver cirrhosis compared to healthy controls. The authors speculated this might be a result of the low dietary intake of this important nutrient, or due to the decreased synthesis in the cells. Reduced CoQ10 levels are also seen in patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. CoQ10 at 10 or 30 mg per kg inhibited fibrosis induced by the liver toxin, dimethyl nitrosamine in mice. Berberine is a plant alkaloid and it's been studied primarily for its bacteriostatic and bactericidal properties. In patients with hepatic encephalopathy, oral berberine at 600 to 800 mg per day reduced the blood concentrations of tyramine, an indirect neurotransmitter that's elevated in hepatic encephalopathy and it can lead to some of the cardiovascular and neurological complications. In a small trial on patients with chronic hepatitis B, C or cirrhosis, berberine at one gram a day for three months reduced the circulating LDL and the total cholesterol levels and the liver enzymes. Although berberine has been studied in human clinical trials and shown to have several metabolic benefits, concerns about the long-term use of berberine have been raised on the basis of certain preclinical studies. Some evidence suggests that long-term berberine use, especially at high doses, might impair particular aspects of cellular metabolism in specific types of cells. Epigallagocatechin gallate, or EGCG, is the most potent and abundant catechin in green tea extract, usually comprising approximately 40% of green tea's polyphenol content. The anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and anti-fibrotic properties of the EGCG make it a candidate as a natural therapy for hepatitis and liver fibrosis. In a lab study, the EGCG inhibited the entry of HCV into the liver cells. An experiment with hepatic stellate cells, which are key in the development of liver fibrosis, revealed the EGCG can regulate the growth and the structure of these cells, such that the EGCG might turn out to be a therapeutic agent for liver fibrosis. In a rat model of NASH, which is characterised by liver inflammation and fibrosis, and it's associated with liver cancer, the oral administration of EGCG at 0.1% in tap water was shown to prevent liver fibrosis and tumorogenesis. 
in a mouse model of chemically induced liver injury and fibrosis, the EGCG was able to attenuate the progression of liver fibrosis, possibly as a result of its ability to reduce the oxidative stress and the inflammatory response. For more on herbs, supplements and natural treatment plans, check out my website.